When life is good, it's easy to praise and thank God, isn't it? But what about when things get hard and we face difficult situations and struggles? Is it quite so easy to praise him then and count our blessings? Today, we're going to find out how the apostles coped when they faced opposition from some of the Jewish leaders. Now, last week, we heard that the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost and enabled the apostles to speak in lots of different languages. And this helped um, them tell many, many people from different countries all about the kingdom of God. And on one day alone, over 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptised. And so the church in Jerusalem started to grow. Now today, we are going to see what happened as more and more people started to follow Jesus. So let's read together from Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 42. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 to 42. Again, it's quite a long passage, so we're going to skip a few verses in the middle, but you can read them later with your family. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them into the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and they began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But... On arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, uh, We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found that no one was inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and saviour, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, 
They were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honoured by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. I advise you to leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. In this story, we heard how some people hated the good news about Jesus, and so they tried really hard to stop it by opposing those who were talking about Jesus. I want you to imagine that you are one of the apostles. What would you have found the most difficult thing to face? A being arrested, B, being put in prison, C, being told not to tell anyone about Jesus, or D, being beaten up. Why don't you talk about this with your family? From our story today, what can we learn about the apostles? How did they respond in their difficult situation? Why do you think the apostles carried on sharing the good news? How do you think they were able to carry on even though they had so much opposition? Why don't you check out Acts 5 verses 41 and 42 to help you? Now, can you remember our memory verse? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 2 verse 21. Should we say that together? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 2 verse 21. The word Acts is a great way of helping us know how to pray. So the letter A in Acts stands for adoration and that reminds us that we need to praise and worship God and tell him how brilliant he is. The letter C reminds us that of the word confession. We need to say sorry for the wrong things that we have done and ask God to forgive us. The letter T stands for thanksgiving and it reminds us that we need to say thank you to God for all that he has done for us um, and done in our lives. And the last letter S is supplication. And supplication is a long word which means to plead or beg or ask for something. So we can ask God for ourselves and for other people as well. So this week, why don't you spend some time praying the Acts way? Adoration. God, you are amazing. Confession. I am sorry, God, for Thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for and supplication, please. And finally, we're going to do something a little bit different to finish with. We're going to have a go at singing a song together. And I think this song uh, reminds us all about the stories from Acts that we're hearing at the moment.
why don't you use the word acts to help you pray? Adoration, confession, thanksgiving and supplication. And why don't you spend some time praising and worshipping God just like the apostles did by listening to some of your favourite praise and worship music? Next week, we're going to find out how the apostles were persecuted by the Jewish leaders. Until then, see you next week. Bye.